the old adage, records are made to be broken. We've all heard that term before, many times in fact. And we're going to hear that term again come April 3rd at WrestleMania. Because the record of 93,000 strong who jam-packed the old Pontiac Silverdome in Detroit at WrestleMania 3 will be overtaken by over 100,000 fans jam-packing AT&T Stadium in Dallas, Texas. We are on the road to history and the road to WrestleMania. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to YouTube's longest running wrestling review show out there. This is We Love It Raw. And we're going to get right down to business, ladies and gentlemen, because we have a star-studded show for you today. We are going to start with the Queen of the WWE, Mrs. Stephanie McMahon. Now, I urge all of you to stand up and show respect to the Queen of the WWE. She is out here conducting business as she does best. That is why she is the authority and you are not. So we're going to grace this show with a message from the Queen of the WWE. Here is Mrs. McMahon. Welcome to Monday Night Raw! Now let me get to the bad news first. My husband Triple H will not be here tonight. I know that's disappointing and for those of you seeking refunds, you'll have exactly 60 seconds to go to the box office. Now, the reason my husband Triple H isn't here tonight is because he has corporate responsibilities to WWE. I know responsibility is a bit of a stretch for most of you. You can't really relate to that. It is not, however, because of Roman Reigns' vicious, brutal, and opportunistic attack on my husband Triple H after he defeated You know, Roman Reigns proved in that moment exactly why he'll never be WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Because just like all of you, Roman Reigns lacks intellect. I mean, why else would he risk his championship match at WrestleMania? I mean, why? For retaliation? For revenge? It's just so short-sighted. You know, as a matter of fact, this is a teaching moment, okay? So listen up, people. You need to understand how to get beyond your pettiness and see the bigger picture. It's then and only then that you will learn the true meaning of success. And believe me, Triple H and I know a thing or two about success. We can buy anything and anyone. And with my husband as WWE, and there's your message by the queen of the WWE. It's plain and simple, folks, okay? She was against what happened to her husband last week. She called it an act of cowardice, ca an act of insubordination, if you may, if you can ask that question. And it was just an act of, you know, unjust. And... She just said, you know, you know, you're risking a championship match on the biggest stage in front of a historic crowd in Dallas. Just because why? You want retaliation because of what happened to you just prior? And Roman now comes out and, you know, he's getting a massive boo from the crowd in Philadelphia and to give you a little bit of a history lesson, it was in, a, in Philly, you know, just the year before that, that, he won the Royal Rumble in Philly and got booed again. So Philly is not on Roman's side whatsoever. They hate Roman Reigns. Or, as a lot of my friends call him, Bull Reigns or Borman Bull Reigns. 
Well, now you're going to hear a confrontation between the queen of WWE and Borman Bo Reigns. See what I mean? Opportunistic. You wait until I say Triple H is in here, and then you're going to come down here and get in this ring and what? Try to intimidate me? This is my arena. This is my ring. And my husband is going to beat you at re Would y'all like to know the real reason why Triple H isn't here? Triple H didn't want to come to Philly because he knew I'd whoop his ass all over Broad Street. And if you thought last week was bad, wait till we get to WrestleMania. I'm walking into your stadium. I'm gonna stand in your ring. I'm gonna beat your husband and I'm taking my title. <laughs> and there's nothing that you or your daddy's money can do about it. There's your disrespect by Borman, Bo Reigns, okay? He comes down and interrupts the queen of the WWE to deliver that message, okay? That message that he says that Triple H is afraid of Bo Reigns? You have got to be kidding me. Okay, Triple H is not afraid of Bo Reigns, okay? He's not. Triple H is a man of action, a man of words, a man of integrity. And what really aggravated a lot of us, including Mrs. McMahon, about what Roman said, that he's the authority? There's a news flash I gotta say to that, okay? You know, Roman is just a competitor of the WWE. He's not the authority. He doesn't make matches. He doesn't make rules. He doesn't contemplate what goes on in WWE. That is the job of Mr. McMahon, Triple H, the board, the creative team, the staff, and of course, Mrs. McMahon. So for Roman Reigns to come out and say that was completely disrespectful. And I'm sorry to say, I'm looking forward to that match and I'm looking forward to a cerebral beatdown by the king, our king, your king, our champion, your champion, the 14-time WWE World Champion. I'm looking forward to a beatdown from Triple H to Roman Reigns. So there you go. That's a powerful way, ladies and gentlemen, to start this show. Okay? You were graced with the Queen's message. You were unfortunately graced with Bo Reigns' insubordination message. But now we're going to get down to business. We're going to talk a match. AJ Styles and Kevin Owens. Now since AJ made his debut in WWE this past January at the Rumble, the popularity has soared for one AJ Styles. And I have to admit, he's a good wrestler, He's a great competitor in WWE with a great steal from TNA. And he still has a lot to learn, okay? He will be a champion, but not just now. But, you know, give or due time, he will be WWE champion. I will say that. And so he's having his match with Kevin Owens. And it was, you know, a back and forth match. I mean, it was intense. High flying gut-wrenching, risk-taking action. I mean, it went on for a good 25, 30 minutes, maybe even more. That's how good these competitors are. First time ever. And 
the end result was Kevin Owens won by way of a distraction from Y2J. Now, Y2J is upset at AJ Styles because of the popularity. So, you think about it, it's just pure jealousy on the part of Chris Jericho. Okay? He's jealous of the popularity that AJ Styles has been getting since the Rumble in January compared to the reaction that Jericho has been getting. So one has to really, really contemplate and ponder this question. Will we see a Chris Jericho, AJ Styles, all-out brawl in Dallas at WrestleMania? We want the answers. I think we're going to find out when Raw hits Brooklyn this coming Monday night. And speaking, ladies and gentlemen... Here's a side note I'm going to bring onto the show right now. I usually do this at the end, but I want to bring it right now. This was breaking news today. I heard from a colleague of mine that Friday was supposed to be Daniel Bryan night. That has been canceled. Daniel Bryan night at MSG is canceled, but the show is still going on, folks, okay? Daniel Bryan, unfortunately, cannot make it, so we gotta see what void WWE has to fill on that night, this coming Friday, March 25th. That's just a side note, speaking of WWE uh, live events coming up. So, back to the end match. You know, Kevin Owens uh, beat AJ, thanks to Jericho, and now, you know, Kevin Owens is talking about, um, the Intercontinental title, you know, it's a prestigious championship and all that, and, um, he's saying, you know, nobody has a chance, nobody deserves a shot, you know, to, uh, fight him at what he's considering it to be now KO Mania. But there's a few competitors that think otherwise. Dolph Ziggler, Miz, Sami Zayn. Now, Kevin Owens came up with a great idea, and I applaud this idea. I mean, it was a fantastic idea. A triple threat match to see who would fight him at KO Mania slash WrestleMania for his Air Continental title. Now, here's the cool part about that. He goes to Stephanie McMahon and says, you know, about the triple threat match. And Stephanie wasn't too thrilled, you know, he barged in the authorities off and said, I wouldn't be too. You know, you don't interrupt the queen and the authority making business decisions in WWE. So... He says, I want a triple threat match. But he didn't say against who, though. Well, we found out that it's go it would be Stardust, Sin Cara, and Zack Ryder. Three no-names, three low-lights, all vying for a title of the Intercontinental title. Well, that match quickly ended up being a no-contest because... The original three of Ziggler, Miz, and Zayn all came down and went after each other, including Kevin Owens. So, to make matters worse, Kevin Owens again barges into the authority's office, disrespectfully, and said to Stephanie, you know, did you see what happened out there? And Stephanie said, yeah, I saw what happened out there. Okay. So, we have a matchup now at WrestleMania, thanks to the authority, and this is a great match. I'm looking forward to this matchup at WrestleMania. Because of the actions of Kevin Owens, ladies and gentlemen, on Monday Night Raw, not once but twice barging into the authority's office, we have a Intercontinental Championship ladder match. Just like what we had in Santa Clara Levi Stadium last year, we're going to have it again this year. The only question is going to be, who's going to walk out Intercontinental Champion at the end of the night at WrestleMania? I'm looking forward to that. And that... I think is what is best for business. And speaking of what's best for business, let's talk about Dean Ambrose now, okay? Last week he gets a visit from Mick Foley. And Foley's talking about, you know, it's just mania, you know, you got a good crowbar, you know, that. All fun and games. And Foley gives him a 
barbed wire baseball bat, just like the one that Mick Foley used to use back in the Attitude Era. So, we're in Philly. This is the home of ECW, the home of extreme, folks. So Terry Funk comes in. You don't want to talk about best for business? This was best for business. You had a legend who has been through it all in the history of wrestling, okay? And I like the message that he delivered, you know. You know, you're going to go in there with a positive attitude, you know. I know you got a big guy in Brock Lesnar. He's a beast. He's an immovable object. He died of wrestling. And Terry gives him another gift. So, besides the baseball bat barbed wire, Terry Funk gives him a chainsaw. Now, hence, Terry Funk used to be called Chainsaw Charlie in WWE. But that's been during the Attitude Era. This is now. Funk is no longer wrestling. Oh, I don't think he is. I don't know. So, he gives him the chainsaw. And in new hand, a weapon of that magnitude to a lunatic of that magnitude, that is best for business. Because that's proven to the entire WWE universe. And Dean Ambrose is going to stop at nothing to tame the beast, the conqueror, the man who ended the Undertaker's longest WrestleMania streak. And he will stop at nothing to do what he can to tame the beast, to tame the conqueror, to overthrow the ninth mayor of, yes, Suplex City. So, I'm looking really, really forward, you know, to that matchup. It's shaping up to be a really, really, really good WrestleMania. Uh, then we had a couple of other side parts of the match. We had the New Day, longest reigning tag team champions of modern WWE. Uh, it was uh, Big E against, I believe it was Rusev. I believe it was, and if I'm not mistaken, it was, yes, it was Rusev, and, um, so New Day retaliated, he got the win, impressive, okay, and then we had other side matches, you know, we had a return match of WrestleMania back in New Jersey, Chris Jericho against Fandango, and just like what happened with AJ Styles, um, we had AJ Styles doing the same exact thing to Chris Jericho. Interesting. Come see, come soir. Touche, as they may say. So there you go. And, uh, you know, then we had the big show, and yeah, he's delivering a good message. Um, his message is about being the best in, uh, in the business of wrestling. Not just in WWE, not just what it was in WCW. But the best overall in the business of wrestling. And I really think his message was really good. So I want you to hear for yourselves what the Big Show had to say to the WWE Universe through uh, we're in Philadelphia. Take a listen. Yeah! Philadelphia! And I tell you what, I've been coming here for a long time, over 20 years. I gotta tell you something, you guys, you guys always say what you feel and you keep it real. Thank you. Now, you know in the past I've been known to kind of run my mouth about certain things and say I'm the greatest giant of all time. Yeah, I said that, I know. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot straight with you and be honest with you. Yeah, I do think I'm the greatest giant of all time, but I have to say that because I have to believe in me. And I have to be confident. But I'll tell you who really is the greatest giant of all time. And that's Andre the Giant. There's going to be different giants. There's going to be different superstars to come along. But Andre carved the path. He made the way. He is the greatest giant of all time. Because he was the first giant and the greatest giant. You know, great, great way to, you know, honor the man who paved WWE back when WWE was just a no-name in this company that time. And, you know, 
the message I really thought, you know, Big Show just said, though, you know, you know, he claims to be the best guy, you know, but he has to believe, and Big Show has to believe in himself, and, you know, just to pay homage to a man like Andre the Giant really shows the class and the standard bearer that Big Show is, not just to WWE, but to people all around the world who want to be the best, whether you're big, small, heavy, skinny, it doesn't matter. Big Show says what he said, and I appreciate and I applaud the Big Show 110%. Then the social outcasts come out, they say their piece, yada yada yada. No one actually gave a rat patoot about that. I think actually a lot of people just fall asleep during that match. So, we're going to do that. Uh, then we had people talking about, you know, this whole Undertaker Shane McMahon thing, you know, and what it means to WrestleMania, you know, the history of the Hell in a Cell. So it was interesting to hear what some of them say, you know, that it's the demonic playground of the Undertaker. It benefits the Undertaker, this, this, and this, what Shane got into. So, you know, really, really, really interesting part to what was already turning out to be a pretty interesting Monday Night Raw, if you may say so. And then, we're going to get graced, okay, by Mr. McMahon. Now, many are contemplating what this message has to say from Mr. McMahon. Now, a lot of people are saying, you know, that Mr. McMahon was going to be the uh, special guest referee. Maybe he was going to be the special ring announcer or timekeeper or he was going to walk out with The Undertaker to the Hell in a Cell match at Wrestlemania. Nobody knew what Mr. McMahon was going to say. Not even me. Okay? We found out, ladies and gentlemen, that Mr. McMahon said that The Undertaker does not win at Wrestlemania then it will be The Undertaker's final match in WWE so they're doing that plot again okay they're doing that again they did it with Shawn Michaels they did it with Ric Flair they're going to do it now with The Undertaker at Wrestlemania think about this ladies and gentlemen the Undertaker could be walking into Dallas and he could be walking out of Dallas for the final time in WWE. I know it's hard to, to, to fathom. I know it's hard for all of us, including myself, to think that we could be witnessing The Undertaker's last moments in WWE. I don't want it to happen. I know a lot of you don't want it to happen. But we might have to face the reality. And we may not see The Undertaker in WWE ever again. So a shocking bombshell by Mr. McMahon. On what was already a bombshell of a night. And to close out the show, remember what I told you about Stephanie McMahon talking about Roman Reigns, you know, that it's classless and what he did to Hunter last week on Raw. So, we're going to close out the show with this. Stephanie is walking out of the arena. And she's all smiles. Hunter comes and picks her up. And, you know, they're all happy. They're about to leave. And the gates open up. And who is out there? Borman. Bo Reigns is out there. So, again. Bo Reigns comes out and does dastardly shit to the king, our king of WWE. When is he going to learn? 
and you don't put your hands on the king of World Wrestling Entertainment. He's your king. He's your champion. Your boss. He's our boss. He's our leader of WWE. But this time the attack that Bull Reigns did on Hunter wasn't as vicious as what he did to Hunter just last week. So now I want you all to think of this, okay? As we as I leave you with with this, I want you to think of this very carefully. One. What dastardly things will Bo Reigns do to our king, Triple H? Okay? Think about that. Number two. If Triple H wins, does this cement his legacy as the greatest WWE World Champion of all time? Does he surpass the greatness of Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Undertaker, Edge, Guerrero, Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair? Number three. Will Shane McMahon pull up the miraculous upset in Big D? And number four, will The Undertaker pull off the win of a lifetime to save his career in WWE? As I read this show tonight, ladies and gentlemen, those are the questions I want you to think about. Okay? Think about those questions, and please, don't be afraid. Because lately, a lot of you have been chickening out on this show. You are not leaving comments. You're not interacting. For crying out loud, damn it. Get up off all your asses and interact with us. That's what we are here for, to interact with you. And if you don't interact with us, we can't interact with your sorry asses. You lazy mofos. So do it. Don't be a chicken shit. Don't be a pussy. Don't be a bitch. Interact. This is an interactive show, ladies and gentlemen. We want to hear from your voices, not just ours. So I'm urging you, no. As the authority of this fucking show, I am demanding you to interact with us. Or we will take actions further on this show. And... I look forward to giving you the last We Love It Raw before WrestleMania next week. Because I will be in Brooklyn at the Barclays Center watching Monday Night Raw, the biggest Raw to ever grace New York fucking city, bitches. And I'm going to be there. And you're not. Because it is going to be a late birthday gift to me. I'm treating myself. None of y'all are treating me to this shit. I took the time and treated myself because I care about WWE. Uh, so. Share this video with your friends, family, your colleagues, whoever you can, alright? Uh, subscribe to our channel, of course, you know, watch the podcast. Or we have a Facebook page as well, you know, like that, follow that. Uh, Interact with this show, you know, wish me a happy birthday on Thursday, you know, because it's going to be my birthday, it's coming Thursday, I'm turning 35 people, uh, by the way, if you want to come out, I'm going to be at uh, Patty Quinn's on Thursday, celebrating my birthday with a few drinks, pool, you know, fun, fun night on Thursday, so if you all want to come out, it's in Flushing, 162nd of Sanford, come out to Patty Quinn's, I will be there, alright, uh, we can talk about wrestling, we can talk about anything you want, you name it, we'll talk. Uh, so like I said, you know, share, subscribe, like our Facebook page, follow our Facebook page, follow our, our, our YouTube page, uh, and interact with the show, please, you know, don't be a pussy, fucking interact with the show, because we count on you bitches to do this, alright? Without your interaction, this show is going to be a piece of crap, okay? We don't want it to be a piece of crap, we want viewership, and interaction gains viewership. Okay? 
And that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure and an honor. And of course, I love doing this. It means a lot to me. Because I give you what I think is the best review I can. I may sound like an ass. But I speak the truth. And that's what I'm here to do, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? I will see you all next week as I give you my live interpretation of Raw Brooklyn from the Barclays Center. So stay tuned to that. And uh, remember, keep it real and keep it raw. And always respect the authority. I will see you next week.